That's the problem today in our churches. You know what the message is? Get your miracle, your seed, your breakthrough, your season, and your harvest. High five somebody. Tell them your blessing is coming. It's coming. It's coming. Slap somebody upside their head. Tell them it's coming. This is the message in many churches. They're telling you to come to Christ. If you come to Christ, you will have everything. You have a car, you have a nice house. You know, you have all these material things. Just come to Jesus. My friends, let me tell you one thing. Jesus will not come to you. He will not come to you at your own demand. He will not submit to your demands. Jesus is not your butler. Jesus is not your genie. My friends, Jesus did not die so that you can become rich. That's not why Jesus died. If that's the reason why Jesus died, then our joy, our pleasure is short-lived. Because when we die, guess what? We leave everything behind. We leave everything behind. My friends, if Jesus died so that you can become rich. You know, yesterday, I was looking through the internet at the top richest, most richest people on earth. And guess what? Can I surprise you? None of them is a Christian. None. Not even one. In fact, all oh, 10 out of 10 are skeptics about Christianity. They don't even believe in Christianity. They are atheists and agnostics. None of those ten are believers in Christ. Yet they are the richest people on the face of the earth. That is to tell you Jesus did not die so you can become rich. My friends, if Jesus himself said the poor you will always have with you, who is your pastor to tell you there will be no poor people on earth? That's what Jesus said. He said the poor you will have with you. Always. This whole idea of sowing seed. Can someone please show me where in the Bible it, it says seed equates to money? Where? Where is that in the word of God? Can someone please show me? So a seed and you will receive your healing. Where is that in the Bible? Where? The Bible says, freely you have received, freely give. Praise the Lord. My friends, the gifts of God are not for sale. They are free. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't give your money to receive healing. It's not in the Bible. You will not find it in the Bible. That is witchcraft. Watch out in your mouth at the end of Pesach. No pastors, no prophets, nowhere in scripture will you find that. Nowhere. My friends, listen to me very carefully. The devil, the devil walks where God's people are gathered. That's where Satan is. You know, we think, when we talk about, well, when we think about where Satan is working, we think he's working in, you know, the, the nightclubs and uh, the prostitutes camp and, you know, where Christians are killed and martyred and, you know, you cannot even take a Bible to China. It's, when you're found in the Bible, it's worse than cocaine. You know, we think where witchcraft is happening, that's where we think that Satan is operating and that's where he's working. My friends, let me tell you one thing. The devil is not interested in the world. He's not. He already has the world in the palm of his hand. The Bible tells us according to the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 9, the Bible says this. It says the great dragon, meaning Satan, 
Russian serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray. The world is already led astray. The devil is not interested in the world. Those in the nightclubs and everywhere else, they are already lost. They are already under his grip. They are blinded by the God of this world. That's what the Bible says. The devil is no longer interested in those people. Listen to what the, Bible, the word of the Lord says in 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. We know that we are from God. The whole world lies in the power of the evil one. The world is already deceived. The devil is not interested in the world. My friends, the devil is interested in the church. He wants the church. He wants where God's people are gathered. My friends, the devil works where God's people are gathered. And how does he work? He works through false prophets. That's how he works. Through false pastors, through false apostles, and teachers and prophetess. Listen to what the word of the Lord says. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit. But test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. My friends, there are different types of spirits. There are different types of evil spirits. And the Bible tells us those spirits work through people. And these people are called false prophets. They are false teachers. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 13 and 5, it says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms into an angel of light. Therefore, it is not great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. My friends, what that verse is saying, it's simply saying this, that the devil has his ministers, and these ministers are called false prophets, and they masquerade as, as, as ministers of righteousness, but really they are evil spirits. In the church, they work where God's people are gathered. That's where they work. False preachers, they're in the church. They're not somewhere outside there in the world. They're in the church. It's the enemy within. It's the enemy within. And if you are someone who's drinking milk and not taking the, 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 the word of the Lord, solid food, you will not be able to distinguish who is a true man of God or a false teacher. You won't because you're not in the word of God. We see in the Bible, the first place Satan works was in the Garden of Eden where God's people are gathered. Where Adam and Eve would worship God, the Bible says, but God would visit them in the cool of the day and they would worship God. Praise the Lord. And Satan came. The Bible says he was able to deceive the woman. He was able to deceive Eve. Satan works where God's people are gathered. And what he does is he twists the words of God just enough to deceive people. That's what he does. He came to Eve and he told Eve, did God really say? What he does is he adds to scripture or subtracts from scripture. He told Eve, if you eat of the fruit, you shall be like God. The Bible calls him the father of lies. He is the father of lies. He was able to deceive Eve in Genesis. Fast forward in the New Testament. Who do you see in the New Testament? Fighting.
fighting against Christ who took Jesus to the cross who persecuted Jesus on the cross my friends it was not the atheist it was not the Roman government no it was the religious leaders